Hello everyone, this is Reese Gibson again from QTE. Part 2 of the 3D tool creation process. Uh, this time we're going to merge the file, the actual solid model, into the part file. Uh, I believe last time we did the uh, retrieve it from an external file. This time we're going to merge it in and use some features to put it on its own level and go create a 3D tool without being in a tool path. Uh, so first thing I want to do is go to my file and go to my merge. Go find the file you need to merge, which is right here. 3D tool. Now, I usually want to offset at whatever the current level is. I usually want to offset it by 10. Okay, merging this in. I mean, if I'm level 10, it would be 11. If I'm on 20, it would be level 30 or whatever. The reason I'm doing this for organization, I don't see the forest through the trees type thing. Hitting the green check. Okay. Now if I go to my levels, I'm going to see that the insert, the holder, and different things got on different levels. Okay. Which is fine. Let's turn all those, let's turn this one off. Okay. Now, notice that the insert is not mated. We are going to go use the mating features. Now I'm going to go straight to my turning, and I'm going to go to my tool laid manager right here. Now inside of here, you can actually right-click and create a 3D tool, as in the tool paths. Again, the wizard's going to pop up and it's going to ask us for a name. Let's finish turn. Okay, is it metric? Do I have a home position? These are defaults. When you select this tool and you want to use home position in your settings, this is what's going to come in. Is it a left hand or right handed cutter? Enter metric. Okay. First thing it's wanting to do, now instead of using the folder open, we're going to go use the file, the arrow select. And this is common in Mastercam. If you look for this little arrow right here, basically if you click this, it's the, wanting you to go to the graphic screen and select something. So right here it says where in the file is this solid hold, solid insert, and it's right here. You have to tell it your corner radius. Corner radius can be either one or the two. All it wants to know. Okay. Next now it says, where's the holder? We won't use the folder. We will use the, the selection arrow. The selection arrow says, where's the holder? It is right here. That's the holder. Okay. Now if you run your cursor over this, is where is the cutting plane? Where is the selection plane that mounts to the tool? And basically what you're telling it is which way is X, which way is Y. Okay, you're orientating the tool to the spindle. It wants to know this is the back part of it. Okay, We will work on boring bars as well. So when you do a right click top view, it says, okay, we're sitting in this orientation. Now, the next one will say, all right, do you need to move the insert to the pocket. Yes, I do. I like the coincident, which we will explore different different functions here. Coincident, coincident says where's the flat plane. Basically, I'm going to go face to face. I'm going to pick this face right there. Okay, and you pick the flat face on the on the actual insert. This face. Okay. Now select the face on the holder. The first selection said what body you're going to. The second pick says which face on the insert. Third pick is what face on the holder. So basically it merves the insert on the holder. Okay? But you notice it's not completely lined up. This this needs to be tangent. Okay? I'm overlapping here. So the fine adjustment is right here in the dynamic transform. Okay? And we're going to use the stop on contact as well. When you hit the edit function, it's going to say select the holder. It's, it wants to know. It says, where's the holder again? It says, right here. It says select the, the face position right here. And it says select a line that you want to line the x-axis to. Okay? And all this is is some, some parallel line that you want to slide down. All right? So basically, I'm going to pick right there. Now, the insert, if you notice the insert is... movable now but if I say stop on contact and I grab my X it will stop okay 
distributing it evenly. If I hit the enter key, it shows me my results. Next. Cutting plane. What this wants to know is says give me a give me something flat that I'm going to project my holder curves to and my insert curves to. You, you basically go to your selection arrow and you pick the flat insert or the actual flat holder. Now if you've noticed, it creates a blue line for the outline and a yellow line for the insert. It overlaps the two. Basically it's doing your work. That's what this is wanting. Now I'm going to go to a top view. Because basically top view, remember the tool, you're looking down on the turret right now. Spindles to the left, tail stocks to the right, turret is away from you. And when I go through my next selection, it'll say, um, what's your insult, insert tolerance? Basically, if you don't see a boundary at this point, you need to change your insert tolerance, which we will talk about here soon when we do a boring bar. Now I'm going to go next to top view. And it says, is this a counterclockwise? I mean, left spindle, right spindle. Is it a bottom turret tool? Is it a top turret tool? See how it's, it's orientating it for you? Good. Next. It says, okay, where's the imaginary point again? That there's an imaginary point. Well, it doesn't know clearances quite yet. It knows the center of the tool, but it doesn't know where the edge of the holder is and where the, ed where the angle of the insert, if it can ramp down in. This is where you scan the tool geometry. When you scan the tool geometry, Click this X right here, this check mark right here. Basically, it finds the three tangent points. If you don't see these three tangent points, the software doesn't know where the tool can go and where it can go. Clean up your final. You want spindle to cool on, you want spindle to come off. Basically, when you grab this tool, you can control the amount of depth it's going to take, the amount of finish it's going to take. Fills out your parameters, guys and gentlemen. By hitting the, the red green check, my tool is created. Do you need this solid model? No, you do not. Basically, it grabbed, it made a silhouette boundary and a and a selection of this holder. You can delete this holder and insert. This tool will still remain. But if you want to keep it, you can put it on, leave it in the level, and turn that level off. Okay. Which I'm going to go come up to my levels. Turn this on, turn these off, right click top view, nope, got my insert still there, do a finish, select my tool, back plot. And simulation will also use this holder, this solid holder. Pretty seamless when you understand the functions. We'll wait for my generate. There's my holder. Thank you for enjoying this video. Hope it helps. Always call QT for support. We're always here.